and good evening, church family. I trust that everyone had a good afternoon. I know that I did. Dora and I, we watch westerns on Sunday afternoon, and uh, the uh, the only thing sleep overtook me this afternoon, so I didn't get to see. Audie Murphy, I, I, I like Audie Murphy, at least in some of his his movies. I like the old westerns. Amen. If you got your Bibles, we'll be in Amos tonight. Just we're going to read a couple of verses from Amos. We're going to be talking about a famine. A famine today. Most people, when you mention the word famine. The first thing that comes to mind is you, you see those pictures in Africa where the people are starving to death. And you see them young, young babies and with the ex- distended bellies hanging out. And, and they show those pictures. And uh, it's, it's, it's horror to us all, isn't it? But there's coming a day when the Bible predicts that there will be a famine in the land. And it'll be a wa- lot worse than what you see in those television pictures. But tonight when we talk about a famine in the USA, I'm not talking about a shortage of food or a shortage of water. What I'm talking about is a shortage of God's Word. There's not enough of God's Word going around right now. There's a famine of God's Word in America today. I was listening to a talk show or a call-in show on the radio one day and they asked three contestants this question. Complete this sentence. Yea, though I walk through the valley of, the shadow of. The three contestants could not give the correct answer. Now, we think that it's... (laughs) We, we, we say, well, that's just natural. No, it's not. If you've never read God's Word, then you do not know. That shows that people do not read God's Word. Everybody remembers Jay Leno on, and when he was on the Tonight Show. He used to do a man on the street segment or interview. And one night he stopped three young people on the street. There he stopped some, and he asked them some Bible questions. The first uh, two college-age women, he asked, can you name one of the Ten Commandments? One of them said, freedom of speech. Leno turned to the next woman and asked her, said, complete this sentence for me. Let he who is without sin. What did the the lady answer? She said, have a good time. (laughs) Amen. Jay then turned to a young man and asked him, who according to the Bible was eaten by a whale? The boy answered quickly, Pinocchio. We laugh at these things, but it is, it is sad in America. Uh, Dora and I watch, uh, a lot of times we will watch uh, Jeopardy, or I do. And they'll have a Bible category on there quite often. And it amazes me some of the simplest things that they cannot answer. Scholars, some of them very learned people, cannot answer some of the simplest biblical questions. In Amos, the 8th chapter, just reading a couple of verses tonight. The 8th chapter, beginning with the 11th verse, says, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of the hearing of the words of the Lord. And they shall wander from sea to sea, and from north even to the east, They shall run to and fro and seek the word of the Lord 
and shall not find it. Let us pray. Lord, we understand that in America today that there is a famine for your word this very day. People are starving and they do not know it. They're starving for the truth, for the word that you have given us to live by. May this go out tonight. May people understand that what we are truly lacking is your guidance in America today. Let this word go out and let it not return void. Touch that heart to that one that's closest to hell this very evening. Let them come to know you in a saving grace before it's eternally too late. For it's in Christ's name that we ask it all. Amen and amen. The word famine strikes fear in our hearts. It plays upon our deepest fears. And famine is in famine of food is not so common today as it used to be. We have means of uh, transporting food to various places in the world to people that are starving. But First King tells us that Israel experienced famine several times. Revelation tells us there will be a famine in the land so bad that millions of people will die. And this is not just localized. It's all over the world. USA will not escape. But there's already a famine in our land today. And the famine is ever bit as destructive as the ones that we see with the pictures of the children who are starving to death. It's slowly eating away every fabric of our country today. This prophecy is coming true. The greatest country in the free world, there's a famine concerning the Word of God. The Word has been regulated to virtual obscurity. In your day-to-day -day walk, in the people you meet, in the situations, you go out shopping or you go to the grocery store, you don't see the Word of God anywhere. You don't hear people speaking the Word of God. You just don't see it. You don't hear it. You don't, it it's not on the billboards. It's not on the, the television. If you turn on the TV and you're expecting to find some, a word from God, good luck is all I can tell you. Turn on your radio, the same thing. Look through your newspaper. There's nothing about God. Books that you can buy and read today are not books about God or about His Word. Talk to your congressman or your senator and ask them about the Word of God. And truthfully, a lot of our churches today are not using God's Word. I remember a, a pastor friend of mine that said he went to Florida one time and went to a had a big sign out. It was an old movie theater it had been. And they'd converted it to a church. So him and his family were vacationing. They went to, the, to this church. And he said they go in and they sing some uh, contemporary music, which is nothing wrong with contemporary music, okay? But the pastor got up and he gave a talk from the pulpit. He never mentioned Jesus Christ. He never read from the Word of God. Yet they called it church. When he left, he said, I was more empty than I was when I went in. You go to God's house seeking God's Word, 
and then leave empty. Today, can I tell you this? Part of the problem for the star of people starving for the Word of God is the preacher standing in the pulpit. And it's the truth. Pastors in America today are more concerned with keeping peace in the church than they are with the Word of God. Got to keep down conflict. There cannot be any conflict. We want to make sure there's no conflict. You see, what's the problem with the preachers is we're listening to people instead of listening to God. I've said it many times. The Bible is to be preached from Genesis 1-1 to Revelation 21. Don't leave anything out. There's some parts in there that are hard. There's some that's hard to preach. There's some of those parts of this Bible that get on my toes so bad. But the, Bible, uh, the Lord says, preach the whole counsel. All of it. If it hurts somebody's feelings, it's not me. It's God. Amen? In the Old Testament, during Amos' time there, God is pronouncing judgment upon Israel. And I think that one day, and it may be right now in fact, God is pronouncing judgment on America. God was so tired of them. Of the merchants were, were keeping religious festivals, not in the spirit that God had given it to them. They were keeping it so they could make money, a profit. They look forward to the holy days and the Sabbath days because, man, this is a time we're going to make money. Look in America today. What about Easter? Boy, those merchants, they get, it, they get wound up for that, don't they? They can sell flowers. They can do all of these things. Cards. They like it. They like these holy days. Especially Christmas. God forbid, you know? You know that the world looks forward to Christmas. Not because it's the birth of Jesus Christ, but because we can make money. All the people are interested in today and then was to, to better themselves. So many people go to church looking for what they can get out of it. And they go away empty. You know why? Because they never put anything in it. All they did was take. There's many scriptures in the Bible that speak of famines and droughts. This particular one is speaking of a famine of the Word of God. In America, there's an absence, a shortage, a time of hunger and thirsting for the Word of God. And it goes from sea to sea, from New York to San Diego, California. All across America, there's a shortage of the Word of God. All we got, books. We've got the book. Just as our president held up, and I, I'm, I'm proud at least he holds it in his hand. But what would have been greater is to open it up and say, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever should believe on Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. <clears throat> I wish we could get them to open it up. Amen. They were showing pictures of Bill Clinton with a Bible in his hand. Everybody knows about Bill Clinton. You ha if you open your book, you cannot live the life that he did. I'm, just, I'm getting on politics. Get away from that. <clears throat> Let's look at this. What would it be like if there was a spiritual famine today? If people were actually seeking and searching for the truth and found nothing, what would our world be like? We'd probably have mentally ill people out walking up and down the streets. 
Our prisons would probably be completely full. We'd have drug addicts going in and out of rehab. Everybody remember Lindsay Lohan? She was in and out of rehab four times. We'd have a people without Christ. We'd have people lost and going to hell. AIDS would be spreading. There would be some new diseases that we've never had. Parents killing children. I don't remember the, name, the woman's name, but it was over, I believe, in North Carolina or South Carolina. One of them. woman strapped her three children in the, in, the, in the back seat of their car and then drove it off into a pond and drowned her three children. Children kill their parents. Children killing children. Children would be abandoned and left. <clears throat> There'd be same-sex marriages. There'd be more divorces than marriages. People are, would be shacking up, fornicating, commit adultery. There'd be hate crimes, terrorist attacks, people losing their job, people losing their home, people starving. Senior citizens would not be able to even buy their medicine. There'd be senseless wars going on. We'd see all types of horrible events going on in the world, getting worse and not better. If we had a spiritual famine in this land, That's what it would be like in 2 Timothy. It would be like 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 7. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient, parents to parents, unthankful and unholy, without a natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, Traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. And you're looking at me. Everybody's looking at But that's America today. We have all of those things. But it can't be. How could we have a spiritual famine in America today? There's a church house on every corner and some and one in between. Well, how could we have that? Because our churches are not preaching the Word of God. They're preaching a different, a different sermon. What about all the Christians? You got to go to I encourage you to try it sometime. You go into Walmart and just walk up to anybody. Get to talking about the Lord. And I'll guarantee you they'll tell you they're a Christian before you leave. If we got all these Christians, why is all of this hatred and stuff going on in America today? If they're all Christians, and God's Word, if you're a Christian, you're to be Christ-like, and Christ would never have done any of those things. If we have all those Christians, how can they be a spiritual famine? People are saying that God told them to live this way. <laughs> yes. They told them, if you just believe in God, you'll have a new car, a new house. You'll have all of the things of the world. Just put your faith in God and He'll give it all to you. You'll have everything. Amen? Maybe you'll get one of those uh, television evangelists. If you'll buy a cloth or purchase some water, you'll be healed of any disease you have. There can't be a spiritual famine in this land, surely. With all the church buildings and all the church people how could there be a thirst for God's Word? It looks like it, there might be in America. It seems that there is an absence of God's Word in this land. It's hard to find it. Anywhere except in God's house, isn't it? You don't see it. You don't see God's Word being taught, preached, talked about. If you see them talking about God's Word 
on the news, it's in a negative sense. You ever notice that? They don't, they don't, they don't get it. They don't want to get it. It's not good news. <laughs> it is for us, but it's not for them. And in fact, it looks like across America today, those that are trying to find God's Word just can't find it. And those that say they have hope won't share it with anybody. Share God's Word with everyone you meet. If there were many people that were hungry and starving, had no food, and, and a few people had all the food, but wouldn't share it, it would appear as if there was a famine in the land, wouldn't it? Can I tell you this? We as Christians need to quit holding back the Word of God. We need to be sharing it with the world. We have, we have the answer to eternal life right here in our hands. We have it. Why are we not sharing it with everyone? Can I tell you this? We need to start teaching our children about the Word of God. At a young age, they need to start learning about God's Word. As I mentioned this morning about the Midwest, Midwestern state, I found out it's Illinois. Illinois forbids to allow students to read the Bible at school. But every prisoner, every state prisoner, is issued a Bible. I said, we got it wrong. We should be giving the Bible to the kids and maybe there wouldn't be so many prisoners in our prison system. What we believe determines who we become and what, we, what our offspring is like. Romans 10, 17 says, So, so then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Can I tell you this? This Word is powerful. This is powerful. It's a powerful Word. We need to use it. It said that this young lady from Columbia, the country Columbia, okay? Young girl, somebody at school gave her a New Testament. And she read the New Testament every day until one day her father caught her reading it. And he said, put that away. It's full of lies. You don't want to read that. But the girl kept on reading until one day her father came home unexpectedly and found her reading her New Testament. He grabbed it and put it in his pocket. The father went off to work with this New Testament in his pocket. He was a mining engineer. And several hours later, siren screamed in the community, there had been a cave-in in the mine. The father was trapped in the mine. The rescue workers worked and worked and worked to try to rescue the miners. But five days later, they finally broke through and they found all 31 men were dead. It was too late. They came to the father who had the New Testament and they said that they found him. He was clutching the New Testament in his hand between his hands, his praying hands. And he said that he had written a note in it. He says, to my daughter, keep reading the New Testament. It is true and right, and I will see you one day in heaven. Then they turned to the back page where the father had signed a commitment card after having said the sinner's prayer. But that was not the end of the story because all 30 of the miners' names were written in the back of that New Testament. The Word of God is powerful. Powerful. How many of you have ever picked up your Bible and you started reading and it helped you with a situation that you were going through right then in your life? 
Haven't we all done that? So why is the Word of God so powerful? Number one, it connects us. It connects with us. Hebrews 4.12 said, For the Word of God is quick and powerful. The Bible is full of divine life, supernatural life. The very life of God Himself is found in this Word. Every book other than the Bible is a dead book. It has no life in it. This is the book of life right here. It connects us. It convicts us. Hebrews 4.12 says, And sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. The Bible never fails to cut. Can I tell you this? It never gets dull. <laughs> and it says that it cuts both ways. Amen? It's sharper than a two-edged sword, and it cuts both ways. A woman went to the post office to mail a Bible to her son who was in college. And the postal clerk looked at her and said, Well, ma'am, does this package contain anything breakable? She said, Only the Ten Commandments. <laughs> Amen. It convicts us. It converts us. 1 Peter 1.23, Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible. By the Word of God which liveth and abideth forever. It conforms us. 1 Peter 2, 2 says, A newborn babe desires sincere milk of the Word that ye may grow thereby. Reminds me of a story of a man who tried to cut cost in any way that he could. And he had a mule, and the oats were getting too expensive to feed that old mule, so he started adding some sawdust to the mule's feed. Well, guess what? The mule just kept eating. He ate the sawdust just like he did the, the oats. And he just kept adding it to it. And it was satisfying him. And he's filled with that sawdust. The only thing is, the mule died. Can I tell you this? We see the same in our spiritual life today. We exchange truth and error for what the Bible says. We start putting in what we want to believe. And what happens? We die spiritually. You need to study the Word right now. You don't have to be saved again. You just need to start living by God's Word. Hebrews 6, 1 and 2, Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works, and of faith toward God, of the doctrine of baptism, and of the laying on of hands, and the resurrection to death, and of eternal judgment. So we find that it also it conforms us. It also counsels us. I saw this uh, somewhere. I forgot what it was on. Some kind of program I was watching. Anyway, Psalm 119.105 said, The Word is the lamp unto my feet and a light into my path. It counsels us. It tells us the way that we should walk. What we should do. Where we should live. How we should live. We cannot be a smorgasbord Christian. Does anybody know what that is? Hmm? We pick up God's Word and we just take out the parts that we want. Those other parts where it talks about our sins, we don't want that. We just want the good parts where it says I have a home in heaven and I love to talk about my home in heaven. But this Bible also talks about your sin will find you out. Amen? It's there. It's in the Word. It's right there. We don't like that, do we? We want to do a smorgasbord Christian. We want to pick out the parts we like. <clears throat> Acts 20, 26 says, Wherefore I take you to record this day that I am pure from the blood of all men, for I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. And that's where our preachers are failing in the pulpit today. We're not sharing the full counsel of God. Preachers today want to avoid the tough issues. 
<laughs> I know that they're saying in America that one day they will, they will confiscate and think I've even done it a few times, confiscate your sermons. And if you have anything in there that's not politically correct, then you could be found liable. You could be tossed in jail for it. It's happening in America today already. But I can tell you this. I will still be saying that homosexuality is wrong. That abortion is wrong. As they're throwing me into jail, I will be hollering the same thing. If you're living in sin, you need to stop. Whatever it is. It could be drugs, alcohol, whatever it is. Pornography, adultery, I don't care. It's still sin and you need to quit doing it. Bible also will conquer every foe that you could go up against. Ephesians 6.17 says, Take the helmet of salvation, the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Whatever your enemy is right here, this is your battle. This is your weapon. You can carry it with you. Amen? Carry it into battle. And it says all enemies. 1 Corinthians 15, 25 says, For he must reign till he hath put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. I want you to... Read, I want to read that one more time. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. You understand that one day there will be no more death. No more. People will walk and live forever. We will live eternally. No more death. I'm looking forward to that time. When I leave this old world and I live in a place where there will be no more death. I've told it many times. My mother passed away and was 14 years old. For a long time, I hated God. <laughs> I'll just be as honest as I can be. I hated God. Took my mother away from him. Somebody said they needed a, uh, God needed her in heaven. I said, no. I hate Him because I needed her worse than He did. And I lived with that hatred for a long time. Until one day, my heart changed. Till Jesus came into my heart and said, Hey, guess what? You get to see her again. I'll get to hug her neck and say, I love you, Mama. And remember this, we didn't say mother, we said Mama. It was Mama and Daddy. And that's the way it always was. Everybody stand if you would. So we need to make a commitment this very day. Before you... Before you go home tonight, make a commitment that you're not going to neglect God's Word. Share it every chance you get with whoever you can. Read your Bible every day. Read it. What does it contain? It contains the words of salvation. How you can be saved. And how you can keep your neighbor from being saved or from being lost. Your family. Share the Word of God with them. Never be ashamed of the Word of God. And we need to work at it every day. If we don't work at it, then it's not going to be done. You're not going to find it on TV. You're not going to find it on the radio. Those preachers and stuff that are on television and radio, they're just out to get what they can. They're not concerned about your soul any more than, than uh, a beggar on the street is. All right, anybody have a comment? Anything? Testimony, word of testimony in your heart tonight. If not, I'm going to ask Buddy, no, uh, uh, Ken, will you dismiss us in prayer? I'll find somebody. Thank you.